So today's 3.6, we're going to be looking at inequalities, which are your less than and greater than statements. You could also obviously have less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. We're going to specifically review something we talked about in middle school, about what happens when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. How does that affect an inequality? So our big idea, multiplying each side of an inequality by a positive number, keeps the direction of your less than or greater than, but multiplying each side by a negative number reverses the direction. And that's the most important part here. So when we go to solve an inequality, if we multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative number, it reverses the direction. So just a quick review on why that's true. If you have two numbers, say 10 and 12, 12 is greater than, your inequality is open towards it. If you read it left to right, it says 10 is less than 12. And we can multiply both sides by 2. And it's not going to change the direction of that inequality because we're going to get 20 and we're going to get 24. And therefore, it still should face this way. It should be open towards the 24. But if we have, say, a 5 and a 6, 6 is greater, and we multiply by negative 2, and we look at the two numbers that we end up with, we get a negative 10 and we get a negative 12. Well, whichever of those two negative numbers is farther to the right on a number line, so closer to zero, is actually the greater number. So the greater number here is actually negative 10. So if you notice, when we multiplied by two positive numbers, and the same would be true if you divided, it doesn't change the fact that this right side is still greater. But if we multiply by negative numbers, it switches which one is actually the greater of the two values. So we're going to apply that to some algebra and just make sure that uh, we can solve some of these inequalities. So first of all, inequality is your math sentence with your less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. We're talking about boundary points. So we're going to put these on some graphs and show what they look like because there's not one set answer for an inequality. It's things that are greater than, so all the numbers greater than or all the numbers less than. So there's lots of answers. And so a boundary point is the point or the number that separates all the things that are solutions from the things that are not. Your interval is a set of numbers between two endpoints. So it is possible that your solution set is not an infinite amount of numbers going up or an infinite amount of numbers going down. It could be between two points, everything from two to five or something like that. That's your interval. And an endpoint is just one of the points that creates that interval. So where does the set of solutions stop? Where does it start? Okay, those are your endpoints. So real quick, we're going to run through these. If you notice, they're all very similar. They all start off with a less than sign. And they're all involving 2x and 8, or the opposites of that. So we're going to see what happens when we put these negatives in different spots. How does it affect the solutions? So starting with the first one, we treat this just like we would if it was an equal sign in terms of how we get x by itself. So since this says 2 times x, I want to reverse that. I'm allowed to divide on both sides. I didn't do anything with negative numbers. Okay, so that sign is not going to change. x remains on the left side. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so x is less than 4. Now we're going to start putting these on graphs. Okay, so if it looks like this, if you wanted to put 0 here, I'm going to put 4 here. When we put these on here, we're going to put a circle at the boundary point or the end point. All right, so right on the graph at 4. And if 4 is included, if this was an equal to, I would fill it in to show that it's included. But we're going to leave it open because 4 is not actually included. So x is less than 4. 4 is bigger than all the answers. So that means everything less than 4 should be shaded. So all these numbers would make this true. So even if I took a number like 0 and I plugged it in, it should be part of the solution set. So if you plug in 0, 2 times 0 is 0. And then think about if it's correct. Is 0 less than 8? Yes. So anything down here, you could pick a negative number, you could pick the number 1, 2, 3. Even the numbers in between those, fractions and decimals, are going to make this true. If you picked a number bigger than 4 out here in the non-solution set, and plug it in, say 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 is not less than 8, so it doesn't make it true. And the number 4 itself doesn't make it true, and that's why we didn't fill it in. If you do 4 times 2, you get 8. 8 is not less than 
eight. So four is not included, but anything less than four will make this sentence true. Okay, coming over here now. Two times something is less than negative eight. Less than negative eight. You think about a number line. If you're at negative eight, everything is less than is to the left. So we're going to solve this the same way. We want to get x by itself, divide by two. So x, I have not divided by a negative. I know the eight's negative, but the number that I actually divided by is not negative. So I'm not changing the sign. I'm not changing the inequality. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. Again, I got a negative answer. There was a negative in the problem. Notice I didn't flip anything. It's all about the number that you're actually dividing by or the number that you're multiplying by. If it's positive, don't change anything. It's only when that is negative. All right, so if I'm going to put this on a number line, here's zero, here's negative four. X is less than negative four. So negative four is bigger than all of the solutions. And so I'm still going this way with my arrow. And I'm going to put an open circle on negative four. It's not included. So if I put, plugged in zero, it should not work because it's out here in the non-solution set. So if I do two times zero, I get zero. Is zero less than negative eight? No. So it's not supposed to be part of the solution set. I know I'm good. Okay, moving to the next one. We're still going to go through the same process. We want to get x by itself, so we're dividing by negative two. Now, here's the part that actually starts to affect the inequality. When you multiply or divide either side by a negative number, it reverses the direction of the inequality. So since I actually divided by a negative, this number, this is the important one, x is still going to stay on the left side, but instead of saying less than, it's going to say greater than. 8 divided by a negative 2 is negative 4. So now the answer says x is greater than negative 4. So if we quickly make a graph, here's 0. Here's negative 4, not included because there's no equal sign here. But now x is greater than negative 4. So all of the answers, x represents all the possible answers, are bigger than negative 4. And so that includes everything over here. So I suggest you always test something. So 0 should be in the solution set. So if I plug in 0, it should work. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. Is 0 less than 8? Yeah, it is. So that works. And if you grab a number that's down here, it should not work. So say negative 10. If you do negative 2 times negative 10, you get a positive 20. Is 20 less than 8? No. So that's good. So I've got my arrow going the right direction. So you can always grab a number on both sides in the solution set, not in the solution set. Make sure that they actually do work or don't work. All right, last one. Now I've got two negatives. Again, it doesn't matter if the 8 is negative, it's all about this number. If I'm dividing by a negative or multiplying by a negative, that's what makes this flip. So I'm going to leave x where it's at, flip this, negative divided by a negative is a positive. So now my answer is x is greater than 4. So here's 0, here's 4, open circle because it is not including 4, and now the solutions, or x, are all bigger than 4. So my solution set is everything this way. Notice every time I shade it, I put an arrow in the end. That's important. If you don't put the arrow in the end, it's saying that your solution set stops wherever the end of your shading is. Okay, and the arrow tells you that it keeps going. So even though I obviously I can't show all the numbers greater than 4, the arrow shows that it keeps going on forever, infinitely. All right, let's quickly check our answer. 0 should not work because it's not in our solution set. So if I plug this in, negative 2 times 0 is 0. Is 0 less than negative 8? No. Okay, so I know I'm going the right direction. Okay, let's try two more. Originally, we weren't going to graph these ones up here. That's the only difference between these. So now we just have a little bit of a bigger number. And we've got this equal sign. So we want to make sure our graph resembles that. So first of all, I want to get x by itself. So I'm dividing by negative 7. Right there, as soon as I start dividing by a negative, a little bell needs to go off. That This needs to flip. So x still on the left side, flip this. So now it says less than or equal to, and then I'm going to divide, and this is negative 18. Again, it doesn't matter that my answer is negative. What matters is I divided by a negative. Okay, and that's going to make it flip. So this is what I think my answer is. What does it look like on a graph? Here's 0. Here's negative 18. When I put this circle, because it's included, this says, all the answers, or x, 
is less than or equal to. So it includes negative 18. Negative 18 should make this a true statement plus everything that's less than. So if I read it the opposite way, negative 18 is greater than all the answers. So that means all the answers are down here. They're all less than negative 18. So zero should not work. If I plug in zero, this time zero, zero, is zero greater than 126? No. And if I use negative 18 and I multiply, negative 18 times negative seven is 126. Is 126 greater than or equal to 126? Yes, the equal to part makes it work. Okay, and if I take any number that's less than, I actually end up with a bigger number over here because I'm gonna have these big negative numbers, quote unquote, big negative numbers. Okay, and then when you multiply times a negative seven, you actually get a big positive number, which makes it bigger than 126. So that's why this is the solution set. Okay, running over here, X is now on the right side. We do need to be careful. So we wanna get X by itself, we're gonna divide by the four. We divide it by a positive. So we're not gonna change the direction here. We're gonna leave it exactly like it is. It's also important that you leave X where it is. So if you just keep this, this direction and all of a sudden you throw X on the left side, cause that's just where you're used to seeing it. You've changed what this said, it's open towards X. It needs to remain open towards X. So you can't just put it over here cause now it's closed towards X. You've changed what it says. So 20 divided by four of the five goes here. Now, if you don't like the way this looks, five is less than X and you want the X on the left side, you can rewrite it, but the inequality needs to remain true. So if it's open towards X, it's saying X is greater than five. So if I move it, it needs to remain open towards X and still say the same thing. X is greater than five. So this is a good answer and you can leave it like that. You don't have to put X on the left side. Quick graph, here's zero. Here's five. There's not an equal sign here, so we're gonna leave this an open circle. X, or all the solutions, are greater than five. So they're all the numbers bigger than five. Quick check, zero should not work. Plug in zero, four times zero, zero. Is zero greater than 20? No, so we're good. All right, moving to the bottom. Solve and check. Divide by three, divide by three, don't move this. Okay, we didn't divide by a negative, it's gonna stay the same. We've got X here, 42 divided by three, 14. Okay, if you wanna switch this around now, put X on this side, open towards the 14. Let's put this on a graph. Here's zero, here's 14. So X is greater than 14. All the solutions are greater than 14. Open circle doesn't include 14 and all the numbers bigger than 14 are this direction. All right, so how do we check this? Well, the check is kind of what we've been doing. Mentally, we've said, okay, this number should work, this number shouldn't work, and we ran it. So we just wanna show it. So our check, okay, first check, is gonna actually, we're gonna use an equal sign and we're gonna see if our value of 14 is the correct one. So it's gonna look like a normal check. We're actually gonna put an equal sign here. Okay, three times 14. Three times 14 is 42. Okay, so that tells us that this number of 14 is correct. But now we need a check that actually checks the inequality direction because we could get the 14 right but have the arrow going the wrong way. So how do we check that? Well, you're gonna pick a number that's in the solution set and plug it in and then make sure the inequality holds true. So 42 should be less than three times something greater than 14. So pick a really easy number. I'm gonna pick 100. Let's put this full screen for you. Okay, so it's gonna say four is less than 300. Is four less than 300? Yes, so we're good. All right, let's try this one. We're dividing by a negative, first of all. As soon as we see that, we know we gotta flip this. Okay, so we have X, this flips the other direction. 35 divided by negative five, it's negative seven. Kept the X where it is, okay? But since I was dividing by a negative, I flipped it. So here's the answer, if we put this on a graph, here's zero, 
Here's negative seven. The solution is bigger than negative seven. It's also included. So when I put this circle, I need to fill it in. And then all the numbers bigger than seven are this direction. So two checks. Check one, is negative seven the correct answer? So I'm gonna change this to an equal sign and actually plug my answer in, so negative seven. I get 35 equals 35, so that's good. So I know the negative seven is correct. Now I wanna check and make sure, okay, my boundary point is right, but is my solution pointing in the right direction? So let's grab zero. So now we're gonna go back to the inequality. So we're gonna leave it like this. And we're gonna plug in a number that's in our solution set like zero. So when I multiply, I get zero less than or equal to 35. Is zero less than 35? Yes. Okay, so there's two checks here. One to check the number, you can use an equal sign. And then one to check your solution set. Is the arrow pointing in the right direction?